All right, ready to get your hands dirty? We've got a lot of stimulus news to get to, including this idea that we could actually see $2,400 for a family in the form of direct stimulus checks. There is a big fight unfolding on the floor of the Senate this afternoon as congressional leaders finally come together for a meeting. So just to refresh your memory a little bit, if you've been following the stimulus drama, if you watched our live show this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time, which we do every day, subscribe to the channel, by the way, and smash that like button. If I bring you any value at all, I hope that I do. Um, anyway, if you've been following this drama, you know that the leadership has not been involved in this. They've been absent from the process. So Leader McConnell on the Senate side has been absent. Uh, Chuck Schumer has not been at the table. Neither has Nancy Pelosi, neither has Kevin McCarthy. They have not. The leadership has not been sitting down. Well, finally, this afternoon, we are getting inching closer, according to Jake Sherman. At Politico, new Speaker Pelosi has invited her fellow leaders to a meeting this afternoon to discuss finalizing the government funding and COVID relief bill. It'll be the four corners of the government. Speaker Pelosi, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, the GOP leader, and Senator Schumer as well. All of them coming together to discuss the stimulus and put these final pieces together. So, okay, once again, at issue right now still is state and local money for government state and local across the country, vaccine distribution, et cetera, frontline workers, those in uh, teachers, um, healthcare providers, uh, firefighters, police officers, sanitation workers, and just as important as all of those pieces are the vaccine distribution pieces. Those are how, you know, the people that are gonna need to get those gloves and gowns and the healthcare workers that they're hiring to have to come out of retirement in order to administer these vaccines for people. Again, I've been showing you this headline, but I will show it to you again, because if you are new here, you haven't seen it, then it's worth seeing front page of the Wall Street Journal. Getting COVID vaccines to people will cost states billions they don't have. And of course, when I talk about Pennsylvania, as an example, my home state, they need $9 billion just to administer vaccine distribution. And right now, there's very, very little in the form of vaccine distribution in the current plan. So where do things stand right now? Again, the four corners of the government are gonna to come together this afternoon. They're actually meeting in a few minutes. Um, they're coming together to have a discussion about COVID relief, fine. Then beyond that is the actual $908 billion package that is now we're starting to see the draft reports of this bill for the very first time. So we're starting to see pieces of this and it's a little frightening to be honest with you because there's a lot in here that, is, that is, has me shaking my head. I will go through just a few pieces of this um, as we go through it. So there are a couple big storylines emerging. I wanna to get to the direct stimulus checks in just a moment. We are gonna hear from Bernie Sanders on this. We're gonna hear from Senator Josh Hawley and there is movement for these direct stimulus checks. I'll get there in a moment because this to me is a big piece. But we are gonna hear now from Senator Schumer and Mitch McConnell on whether or not we will see a stimulus package at all. Like, are we at a head? Are we gonna actually get anywhere in this? Are we moving forward with any kind of a stimulus package? Here is Mitch McConnell speaking to reporters uh, just a few minutes ago and says, look, we're not leaving town. And as I've said repeatedly, number one, we're not leaving here without a COVID package. It's not gonna happen. We're gonna stay here until we get a COVID package no longer, no, no matter how long uh, it takes, we'll be here until we get a COVID package. Number two, the way forward, obviously, is to put aside the two things that are the most contentious on each side, liability protection and state and local. We all know the new administration is gonna be asking for another package. We can live to fight another day on what we disagree on, but we ought to agree to go forward on what we can agree on. That is the way uh, forward. All right, thanks for your wise words there, Turtle Boy. So again, he comes down to this moral argument, This he's sort of putting these two things on a moral pedestal together, right? He's saying that state and local funding is the same thing as liability protections for businesses. Horse crap total horse crap. In fact, the American people see through it, don't you? Let me drop, drop me a comment below. Do you think that state and local governments receiving money for vaccine distribution, frontline workers, police officers, firefighters, et cetera, teachers, is the same thing as big corporations being uh, protected against lawsuits when they harm their employees through, you know, inadequate PPE protection and other things? 
Do you think it's the same thing? Let me know in the comments below, because here's a new poll that just came out moments ago. Take a look at this. Most Americans want stimulus checks, and they reject the GOP's red line on liability protections. Listen to this. While Congress remains gridlocked, Americans know what they want. A second round of stimulus checks, please. Liability protections and student loan forbearance can wait. Two in three Americans said stimulus checks were the most important provision of the next relief deal, according to the, this new finance, uh, Yahoo Finance and Harris poll. Fewer than one in four support, support liability protection for businesses, and only one in five back student loan payment deferrals. Here's one economist says the liability shield just doesn't make any sense to people. People don't understand why that would be a priority. Well, imagine that. Why would liability protection even being discussed right now? Why? Because Mitch McConnell and his merry band of Republicans who've been bought and sold by these big corporations are demanding it. These big corporations have been on the phone. No wonder Mitch McConnell has bags under his eyes. Look at him. Because all of these corporations have been calling him nonstop over the past few weeks saying, look, look at these bags under his eyes. Look at poor Turtle Boy. He's not gotten any sleep. Uh, I've been getting phone calls from uh, all these big companies telling me they want this liability protection so they can screw over workers. Uh, gotta do it. Uh, that's what I gotta do. And it's true. And we're now getting, I, now we're actually seeing what's in this thing thanks to a draft, a, a draft look at the stimulus package from this bipartisan group of senators. Take a look what's in this thing. The draft Senate legislation obtained by the Daily Poster would shield healthcare executives from wrongful death lawsuits. It would limit enforcement of the Civil Rights Act, and it would empower the Attorney General to punish workers and customers who sue corporations. There you go. It's already in there. So we already have we already have all of these provisions to protect big companies. And that's what we're fighting over. So you're again, you're putting these two things on the same pedestal, state and local money and liability protections. Well, we got some news just a short time ago. Apparently Mitt Romney in the room where it happens in negotiations has asked for stimulus checks to be put back on the table stimulus checks to be a part of this negotiation. He also wanted uh, liability protection removed and he wanted uh, additional checks for, uh, he wanted additional unemployment benefits put in here um, and additional money for state and local governments. But I, and it was immediately tabled by, by the house leadership, uh, by the leadership and Mitch McConnell. Like that's done, we're not doing that. Nice try, sorry. Chuck Schumer, for his part, says we absolutely need to get stimulus passed. He came out to the podium just a few minutes ago and had this to say. Getting brighter every day. We have a long way to go. But we can't think that the crisis is over. We need to pass COVID relief to help our fellow Americans get by until we eradicate this virus. We need to fully fund not only production of the vaccine, but its distribution as well. The states badly need that money, and we need to get it done for every for everyone and for every state. So Democrats right now are holding firm on this idea of state and local government money. Get rid of that liability protection piece in there. We don't need it. And Democrats don't want it. And these big companies, by the way, have been running roughshod over you, the American worker, for years. And it's only going to get worse if we allow them to do this. Wrongful death. And by the way, it would be retroactive. So anybody who gets this coverage, this would go retroactive all the way back. So all of those people right now that have filed insurance claims because they've gotten sick on the job because their their company didn't take care, for, didn't take put in proper precautions to take care of them. Yeah, this would be retroactive. It would go backwards. That's how much Congress gives a crap about the American worker. They're willing to just they're willing to just run over you like a steamroller. That's why we need people like Bernie Sanders who will stand up for the American worker. So he has come together with uh, in, a, in a tweet this afternoon, over 60 grassroots organizations representing millions of people are demanding Congress provide $1,200 direct payments to working class adults and $500 to kids. It is time for Congress to listen to the will of the people and pass relief for working families. 
he is holding firm on this and they will bring this to the floor so this idea that we're not going to see stimulus checks from this this bigger package might be the case bernie sanders looks like he's going to hold this senate a hostage and so is josh hawley republican bipartisan support to hold the senate hostage if they do not put direct stimulus checks on the table this has got to be part of this deal uh, senator josh hawley just a short time ago took to the podium and he was assailing his Republican counterparts. This is amazing to hear. I'm telling you, here's a guy that's stepping up. This guy's got courage. He's grown some Bernie pair, if you know what I mean. So he took to the Senate floor and he was, a, he was, he went right after his Republican colleagues. He's like, I don't know which one of you wouldn't support this. Are you crazy? Listen to Josh Hawley. I love this. The Senator from Missouri. Reserving the right to object, Mr. President. This is a very simple thing that we're talking about, and I can boil it down really easily. If the Senate of the United States can find hundreds of billions of dollars to give to big government and big business, surely it can find some relief for working families and working individuals. And I would just submit to you that it is working families and working people who should be first in line for COVID relief, not last. And that is why the amendment that Senator Sanders and I have proposed is so common sense. $1,200 for individuals, $2,400 for families, $500 for every child. And as Senator Sanders rightly says, every member of this body has voted yes in favor of this relief before. What's more, I can't figure out who exactly is opposed to it. The President of the United States has said that he is in favor of direct assistance. I thank the Majority Leader for his own support for direct assistance. The Speaker of the House has said that she is in favor of direct assistance, and that is why there is no reason why this body should leave next week before we vote on and approve direct assistance to working families. Now, let me just say one other thing. Let me tell you about a phone call I had with a friend of mine at home when this Congress approved direct assistance back in March. He texted me and then he called me and he said, I'm seeing this news about relief that we're going to maybe get a check. He said, is that real? And I said, yeah, that's real. And he said, well, I don't know. I'm worried about taking it. I mean, what, what, what if we spend the money? I mean, we could use the money, but what if we spend it? I can't pay it back. You know, it comes back and now I got to pay it back. And I said, you don't have to pay it back. It's relief because you need it because you're a worker. This is a guy who works in concrete. That's his business. And he said, are you serious now? You're serious that we can keep this money? I can use this for my family? And I said, that's exactly what it's for. And his comment to me was, his words were, man, this is a godsend. There are families like that, not just all over Missouri, not just all over Vermont, but all over this nation. And they are in need today, like they were in need in March. And it is incumbent upon this body to act. Hallelujah. Josh Hawley, Republican from Missouri. Growing a pair. That's bipartisanship right there. He's going to get he's going to get eviscerated probably from his big money donors who don't want him to do this but you know what the people that will come to his defense are the the american people the people that stand up and vote for him the constituents that will remember that he stood up and defended them just like bernie sanders calling on us to get this stimulus pa bill passed to get stimulus checks in the hand of the american people $1,200 direct payments to working class adults. That's $2,400 for a couple, $500 to the children. So that is one avenue that I am watching very closely because there is growing support now among a number of different senators who are in these negotiations to try to see if they can put in stimulus checks and maybe removing something else if they have to, if they can. But you know, even if they don't have to, just put that in there. Put this in there for the 300 billion that it'll cost. Yes, we can afford it. Yes, as the Federal Reserve has said, we can afford it. Because interest rates are incredibly low, our borrowing capacity is high. And the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell has given them carte blanche to do this. Because the scarring on the economy will be far worse if we don't do it. So some latest news coming in just a few minutes ago. Um, ahead of the meeting that's about to unfold here just in a few minutes between Mitch McConnell um, said 
Look, we all know that the new administration, the Biden administration, is going to be asking for yet another stimulus package. It's not like we won't have another opportunity to debate the merits of liability reform and state and local governments in the near future. So they're you know, earlier this afternoon, Senate, Senator McConnell acknowledged for the very first time that Joe Biden won the election and he called him to congratulate him. Now that it's been official and certified by the Electoral College, Senator John Cornyn of Texas also weighing in on this. He says the decision to split off the more controversial issues indicated an awareness that the only bill with wide consensus had a path to becoming law. So, again, the only way we get stimulus is if they remove liability insurance and state and local from this discussion. That's it. And then if Bernie Sanders and Josh Hawley can come together to push for stimulus checks for the American people. Uh, that's it. That's what's on the table at this hour. There are a couple of other pieces I want to bring you here and some pieces of news on rental assistance. So we're getting word exactly how the rental assistance would actually work. Um, for those of you who are behind on rent, uh, haven't been able to get caught up. Uh, we now know that the rental assistance, the emergency rental assistance, because we've seen the draft pieces of this legislation, the payments will go to landlords. The payments will go directly to the landlords unless the landlord refuses to participate in the program. Landlords can apply for assistance on behalf of the tenants. So if you've had tenants who haven't been paying because of a COVID hardship and you're a landlord, who can't pay your mortgage and may lose the property, you can now apply under this legislation, you would apply for the rental assistance on behalf of your tenants. That would allow them to get caught up. It opens the door though, and I'm fearful of this, and I know it's gonna happen for these large owners to apply for entire buildings. So we already saw Black, um, we already saw Blackstone Group, right? I brought you that news just the other day, them boasting about how they've been raising rents. And they've got empty buildings instead of doing the rent control shuffle, they've been leaving properties empty rather than um, put new tenants in these properties and have to deal with the rent control issue. So again, I think, you know, one of the largest landlords in the country, of course, is Mr. Schwartzman, the CEO of the Blackstone Group, who has been boasting about uh, raising rents during the pandemic and also going to be able to take advantage of buying up all these foreclosed properties. He did that on a conference call with JP Morgan the other day. It's outrageous, but he did it. So can he come in, swoop in and apply for an entire building? Is he suffering right now? So he's able to swoop in and get huge amounts of rental assistance. He's had record profits. I hope that there's some kind of, even though it doesn't appear like it is in this draft legislation, I hope that there is some kind of ceiling as to who gets to get access to these rental assistance programs. Because I know that those guys are going to be all over it like stink on a monkey. You know it and I know it. And finally, the internal talks we're learning from Senator Mitt Romney, he floated including a $1,200 stimulus check, 2.0, and more vaccine money in the package, and dropping the state aid and liability shield in exchange, and apparently the, the group said no. So he's tried. He, he tried. Um, so again, liability protections, state and local money will be dropped from this. The big question is whether or not Bernie Sanders and Josh Hawley and a a bipartisan number of senators and members of the House are now coming together to demand stimulus checks in this in this proposal. We'll have to see. But we heard from Gen uh, Senator Joe Manchin just a short time ago in an interview with Axios, and he said that uh, it doesn't make any sense. He said, think about it. If someone is at home and they have a job, they're going to get a check in the mail when someone over here doesn't have a job and they lost their job and they're not going to get aid. What, I don't understand how that's mutually exclusive. What does one have to do with the other? Can't you provide stimulus checks for people so that they can actually put food on the table? And the person who's unemployed also gets their unemployment benefits? We're, so we're against helping people that, have, that maybe have a job but literally are living in the margins? What about all of the people that have had their hours slashed that are still working? or have had one parent had to stay home because of virtual learning for their kids. Yes, they have a job, Senator Manchin, but they've lost huge amounts of income in their family and they've had to cut back on food, medicines, co-pays for doctor visits. Get your head out of your ass. So that's the very latest. Smash that like button.
smash it, beat the hell out of it tonight, would you please? And subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for being a part of our community. I should mention, of course, that we have our free daily newsletter. It's totally free. Bring you up to date on all of the business news that you need to know for your family. Just go to morninginvest.com. That's our website. Sign up for free. All you need is your email and it'll be delivered to your inbox first thing in the morning. You can read it over coffee. Much love to all of you. Stay safe. We'll see you bright and early on our live show at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Set the little reminder on your alarm clock. Bye, everyone.